Josh says, hi, all. I am struggling with an issue and hoping you can help. I have a domain, contoso.com, so original there. I think, I think somebody Teams, owns that already. I, yeah. I think so. <laughs> uh, where Microsoft Teams is being utilized, and I am trying to invite external users to the team. I add them as a member, and the user receives the email stating they have been added. However, the team does not show up in the external users team list. Am I missing a setting? Tried it with three separate users. I relate to this. I was trying to do this. I was trying to do this just yesterday, trying to fix my son's tenant. So yes, I'm sitting here with bated breath. <laughs> uh, it, it's one of my favorite because we just naturally think, oh, I can just put in an email address and invite someone. There are some administrative controls that have to be enabled, um, kind of switches and toggles that uh, need to allow your external uh, capabilities. We call that federation. So when I think of uh, what you're trying to accomplish, there's a couple or a few different flavors that are inside of Microsoft 365. Uh, and Teams. Uh, one of them is just really simple. Uh, you want to chat with someone. Um, I always say allow this. Uh, you allow this in the Teams Admin Center. You enable federation, right, or external uh, chat. Um, what that allows is simply the ability for you to communicate to anyone. You're opening a door up to everyone. I see that very similar to email. You allow everyone in your company to email out anyone they want to do the same thing with uh, enabling the federation. So that's one, it could be blocked. The second way is if you wanna collaborate on files, then leverage uh, what we call Azure B2B or, or guest access. Um, that brings in not only just chat, but also now you can collaborate on files. The person has to change their tenant, come into your environment for you to do that collaboration. And then the third and final way, I think we talked a little bit about earlier, but that's shared channels, another administrative control uh, that's using cross-tenant access settings. So you can enable uh, the capability to either have a one-way communication or a two-way communication between two organizations. So those are the three ways. So I'm, I'm guessing here, uh, Josh, that you might be getting tripped up a little bit by how to do the invitation because you first have to allow it in order for you to be able to do any inviting of anyone into your environment. Yes, if if somebody, if that has not been set up from an administrative side of things, um, if, if that's the case, it, it, there's no error being thrown for Josh. He's not seeing that, just he sends the invite, they see it, and then it's just, it's not showing up properly. Right. And I know you can add a person in there. Uh, it just won't do anything. So there's a there's a few administrative settings, the Teams Admin Center, and as well as uh, the Azure uh, area. Those two areas control that capability, even allowing you to send an invite if you're if you're leveraging B two B. But I would work with your admin, uh, or if you are the admin, go over there, take a look at your federation settings. You might have it completely turned off. So therefore, no one can come in and do any chatting with you. Yeah, so be the first place. If you're not the admin, talk to your admin. Yes. Make sure that's enabled. Make sure, uh, you know, uh, there's a whole separate conversation of what that means. When an organization has that turned off, thinking, hey, we're going to make our system more secure. The downside is that what happens is people say, okay, well, I'll go use Google Docs or I'll send it to them in Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger. So a much less secure way of collaborating happens when you right. just say say no. But uh, maybe hopefully for Josh, it's just an oversight and it was turned off and the admin corrects that. Yes.